Hello, let's start this module with a very small story. Okay, and this story is about one person who started business. Okay, when he started his business, he hardly used to take any salary. Okay, so he used to take a very decent salary so that he can run his house. Obviously, a businessman also has a house, he has his own expenses, right? Then he used to hire his own people as well, maybe his son, his brother, his other relatives. But then he used to pay them a market salary or a decent salary. Okay. So if someone who deserved 25,000 rupees per month, he used to pay him 25,000 rupees. Right. His business was flourishing and it flourished well for three years. It was a private limited company only. Okay. But then someone suggested him that since you got a very good balance sheet, your profitability has increased and it has increased at a very good rate, maybe 30% a year or even 100% a year or even per month it was increasing by 20% or 25%. In previous modules, many times I have discussed about power of compounding and you know that how powerful it is. So if something is growing at a constant rate month by month it will obviously give wonderful results and that's how this company was also giving wonderful result and from one store it became 50 store right after three months someone suggested him that why don't you go public so now he's planning or he planned for an IPO and he bought his company into public, uh, you know, in the public domain. He listed it on the exchange. And what happened that the share of his company was available to trade. Great. Now, the point here is now that the share is available to trade and he has diluted some stake, let's say the 20% of the company in the secondary market. Okay. Now, People are trading, the company got a valuation, he got more money on the balance sheet on his company so that he can run it better and he can open more stores, right? This is a typical story of any company, right? And it is a story from a founder perspective or a promoter perspective. Now, what happened that people like you and me went ahead and subscribed for the IPO or started buying the shares from the secondary market. And we all become partial owner of that company. Well, everything is fine till here. And why we bought the share? Because we saw that compounded annual growth and we saw that at this rate, if this company grows to 20 years, it will become a much larger company and we will get a return on this company, right? And with this anticipation, we invested. Well, now the business is still growing, but the share price is not growing. Some changes has happened. The person who was withdrawing a very limited salary has started taking out a huge salary for him. Now that it's a private, it's a public limited company, it's in public domain, he still have majority of the share. What he can basically do is he can take good salary on his name. He can take good salary on his relative's name also. He can give other of his relatives a good salary as well. So what we can see here that the profitability is started going down. However, with the extra capital infusion, the sales has been increasing. So what we have seen here that there are two part of it. One is sales and another is profitability. We call one the top line and another the bottom line. What we also see here that it is very important that the profitability and the sales both grows at the same rate or even if not at the same rate, they go in a correlation, right? Yes, it is correct that when companies grow and they become much larger, they get face this issue where they have more expenses, some extra expenses due to which a little bit of profit comes down, but it don't come down drastically. But in this case, the story which I was telling you here, the profit 
growth has come down drastically. However, the sales growth is still the same. What do you see here? You see here two things. One, we do not only have to see that how the sales of a company is growing. We also have to see whether the profitability of the company is growing or not. Right? You also see here two things in this story. One, what you basically see is certain numbers. Numbers where you saw a mismatch. A mismatch where the profit is not growing in align with the sales. However, the company remains the same. Another thing which you see is the change in behavior of the promoter. When his company was 100% his own company, he was taking limited salary. But the moment he got money from the market to grow this company, he started taking more salary. Everything is there as per the law. Right? He's, he has not broken any law. But then his intent has changed. Well, his intent is something we judge as the quality of a company, the quality of the management. When you are running a company, you are basically a caretaker of that company. In capitalism, the true sense, a person who is running a company should act as a caretaker of that company and not the final beneficiary, right? The beneficiary should be everyone, each and every shareholder. But it usually don't happen. And when it, it usually don't happen, people lose money even in good businesses. Businesses which is showing good numbers, right? So that is why when we saw that these kind of situations has happened on many fronts, sometimes you don't find management very competent. Sometimes you don't find management, the new management, not very honest management means people who are running the company. Sometime on quality side, you see many other issues. And even when the number was going good till now, the company will suddenly become a bad company for investment. And that is why we need to go and check a company from both perspective, qualitative perspective and quantitative perspective. Well, the base of our fundamental analysis set up on this small story where it is very important that we go and understand the quality of the company as well as the numbers which this company is posting. To understand the quality, we have to go and check different qualitative parameters, which I'm going to explain in class 22 and class 23. Then you have quantitative side where the numbers get reported through different financial statements. So we will learn about different financial statements like balance sheet, profit and loss, and cash flow statements in quantitative analysis. Why do you do qualitative or quantitative analysis? To understand whether the company is good or not. It is properly valued to invest or not. It is undervalued or overvalued. Well, to do the valuation part, so we have included the fundament, I mean the valuation should be the part of the fundamental analysis. So we have included valuation technique, DCF analysis into fundamental analysis class, which will come here. But before understanding DCF, what we will do that by using the three different financial statements, we will learn about ratio analysis, which will be used for relative valuation. So whether TCS is better than Infosys on certain fronts based on the numbers reported in financial statements or whether Sun Pharma is better than Lupin in pharma industry, right? So to understand on which front, which company is better based on certain numbers written into different kind of financial statement is called doing a relative valuation. So before going and understanding that how the intrinsic valuation means the actual valuation needs to be done before doing that, because even after teaching uh, me or you learning from this course, the DCF valuation, I have my own assumption where I feel that since I'm making this course 
mostly for retail investors and early students they will end up using relative valuation more where i am focusing three classes on financial anal ratio analysis and one class on dcf however on supplementary side we will include more way of doing the valuation as well in the fundamental analysis classes only but through different case studies okay then some people may have a curiosity how exactly a fundamental analysis look like well when you see a equity research report it is nothing but a fundamental analysis done for one company some equity research report may have technical graphs included into the uh, report but when you see a equity research report you think that okay in this or the bare minimum expectation from that report you should have is it should have all the numbers all the qualitative part like how the management is doing what is the market size what are the different competitive advantage this company have and so many other things related with the qualitative analysis well but before we jump to qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis or financial ratios or even doing dcf analysis or understanding how to write equity research report what we will do that we will build our base first in the introduction section itself and we will build our base by introducing all those financial terms which we are going to use in fundamental analysis so that in a flow we have no absolutely no issue with the technical terms right so in module 3 introduction video we are going to include also the all technical terms which used into fundamental analysis class so let's jump into that thank you